In this video, we're going to cover how to solve basic algebraic equations, where there's only one unknown letter. We can see this if we look at these two equations. In this left one, the only unknown letter is this x. And in this right one, the only unknown letter is the a. When you're asked to solve equations like these, you're really being asked to find out what number the unknown letter represents. So in this first one, we're being told that something plus 3 equals 10. And we have to find out what that something is. Now, you might just know automatically that the answer here is 7, because you know that 7 plus 3 equals 10. Most of the time, though, the questions will be a bit trickier. And in order to find the answer, you'll have to rearrange the equation to get that unknown letter all by itself. Whenever you rearrange equations, though, there's one key rule that you have to remember, which is that whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side of the equation as well. If you don't do this, then the two sides won't actually be equal to each other anymore, and the equation won't be correct. So for this first equation, in order to get the x by itself, we need to get rid of this 3. At the moment, the 3 is being added to our x. So if we want to get rid of it, we're going to have to do the opposite and subtract 3. However, if we subtract 3 from the left-hand side, then we're also going to have to subtract 3 from the right-hand side. Because remember, we always have to do the same thing to both sides. It's completely up to you how you want to show this, but one of the most common ways, and the way that I think is probably easiest, is to put a little arrow on either side of the equation and put a minus 3 next to them both, so that you know to subtract 3 from both sides. You won't get any marks for this in the exam, but it helps for more complicated questions, where it's really easy to get confused. So if we subtract this 3 from the left side, then it will get rid of the 3 that we already have, and we'll be left with just x on the left. Then for the right, 10 minus 3 is 7. So we just put 7. And we now have our answer, that x equals 7. Let's have a go at this second one, where 14 is equal to a minus 5. To get the a by itself, we need to get rid of this minus 5 term. So we're going to have to do the opposite and add 5. But remember, we have to add 5 to both sides. On the left, this gives us 14 plus 5, which is 19. And on the right, the minus 5 and the plus 5 cancel each other out. So we're left with just a, which means that a must equal 19. Next, we need to look at equations that involve multiplication and division. The idea for these is exactly the same. We want to get the unknown letter by itself. And whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So in this first one, to get x by itself, we need to get rid of this 3. As the x is currently being multiplied by it, to get rid of it, we're going to have to do the opposite and divide by 3. So we need to divide both sides by 3. On the left, 3x divided by 3 gives us 1x, or just x. And then on the right, we do 12 divided by 3 to get 4. So x must equal 4. For this next one, we're told that 15 is equal to p divided by 4. So to get the p by itself, we're going to have to do the opposite and multiply both sides by 4. 15 times 4 is 60. And on the right, the divide by 4 and the multiply by 4 will cancel out. So we're left with 60 equals p. Let's try two more quick ones. This first one, 4 plus b equals 19 is a bit different to the other ones we've seen so far. 
because there's no sign in front of the full. So it's not really being added or subtracted. If there's no sign though, we know that it's a positive four. So you can think of it as being a plus four, which means that to get rid of it, we just subtract four from both sides. So on the left, the plus four and minus four will cancel out to leave us with just B. And on the right, we'll do 19 minus four to get 15. So B equals 15. And finally, for this last one, 7x equals 28. You just divide both sides by 7. So x must equal 4. And that's it for this video. So hope you found that useful. And we'll see you again soon.